According to my clock, it is now 1040. So we're going to begin. Um, I'm Heather Gilgall, and I'm going to be talking to you about how to use the YALSA books in your program. And it really can be any book list. It can be Newberry, it can be Prince, it can be any of the lists that are put out. It's going to be more about um, activities and ways that you can use books in your program. Um, we are going paperless in this uh, budget crisis era. I don't have any money to print stuff out. Um, so also, um, we just got out with notice this is here at my Union High School District. So it's almost kind of like, you know, when you go to people know they're going to die, they're like giving stuff away. <laughs> I, I had all the all the extra handouts and some extra books I had laying around, and I'm going to be giving away a lot of stuff today. So, lucky you chose my workshop to come to because I like to give away free stuff. Uh, everything that I have, um, I really don't want people to have to reinvent the wheel. So everything that I create, everything that I do, uh, I put up on the wiki, and it's you know use it. You don't even have to put my name on it. When I see my stuff in someone else's presentation or in someone else's classroom, I'm like, hey, yeah, that's me. Uh, I just like it that you like my stuff enough to use it. So everything that um, that I'm post posting is going to be on my wiki, and there's also going to be the link to this wiki at the CSLA uh, wiki for this session. But this is my uh, wiki. It's R I Y L, which stands for Read If You Like. And you may have um, seen this particular wiki presented in uh, one of my previous workshops, but it just keeps growing and growing. Every time I present, every time I come up with a new idea, <coughs> it goes here. And then it also links to our district wiki, which is um, for Anaheim Union High School District, which myself and Kathy Mayer, who's also in Anaheim Union High School District, we put all our stuff there. And most of it's in uh, Word format, so you can just download it and you know, make it your own. So this is my wiki, read if you like. And the section that I'm going over today is here where it says Programming with Quick Picks. I served on the Quick Picks Committee uh, for four years. Not everyone gets that much time, but two of those years were as an administrative assistant where I kind of did all the paperwork. So I got to watch how it worked. I got to be on the committee, and I got to um, then serve two terms and one of them is chair. So I've been living and breathing quick picks for four years and um, it's really turned me into a, a quick pick reader because there's so many books out there to read that um, if it doesn't have an interesting cover and it doesn't hook me within the first few pages, I'm not going to waste my time. So a lot of the activities I have center around quick picks because I really think if you have to choose one list, that that is probably one of the best ones to, to choose. Um, of course, you do have to be aware of your community when you're using Quick Picks because uh, we are well known for choosing edgy things. I don't want anybody to get fired. So make sure that you're going to be okay. Look at the reviews when you're, um, when you're buying books. Make sure that if you know there's some hot button topics in your area, uh, you might not want to just buy the whole list because um, You'll get things like um, one time we had uh, the F word. This one was nominated last year. Um, it didn't make the list though. I had a really conservative group when I was chair. Most of them were middle school librarians, and they're like, I can't even put that out. I can't get feedback. Um, but we actually did find someone who had a, read a teen mom group, and she said, oh, My kids wouldn't like that. They, you know, they wouldn't find it funny. <laughs> they would not find it funny. But the funny thing is, it's a beautiful picture book. It's so awesome. It's beautifully written. It has beautiful pictures. And um, they actually um, came out with a G-rated one that says, seriously, just go to sleep. This is a favorite to pass out at um, maybe showers uh, for new moms, um, and not teen moms, because they don't find it very funny. Um, <laughs> So um, some of the books I'm going to show, just pass around the things I'm talking about. Uh, if it gets around to the end there where my basket is, just toss it in there. And uh, if you want to look at some of the things I'm going to talk about. So this is where my website is. Um, if you were in the previous session, Debbie Ford mentioned that uh, ALA is going to be in Anaheim this summer in June. If you can go, I, I didn't even know this rule existed until Joy Millen, who was part of CSLA, pulled me in to be her administrative assistant. Um, YALSA has so many great materials. 
uh, ALA puts on a great convention. Uh, if you can just get an exhibits pass, which is only $25, publishers give away tons of advanced reader copies, and I'm going to give uh, some of that away today also. And um, you get author signings, they give away a whole bunch of free stuff, and you really get exposed to a lot of amazing things. And I highly recommend, I have the link there. Um, you need to um, register. The conference, I think, was like $230. And um, to become a member of YALSA, first you have to be an ALA member for $130, and then $60 for a YALSA membership. But let me tell you, I get back, dollar-wise, way more than I pay to be a member because they have such amazing resources. Um, all the links to the lists are here as well. Um, you're going to find me just redid the YALSA website, and it's kind of a pain because I want you to log in to see everything. Uh, you don't have to be a member, you just have to create a login, and it's kind of them gathering statistics on who's visiting and how many visits there are. But if you used to go to the website and you're wondering, why is it not like me anymore? Um, sometimes if you have a direct link, it'll give you the page, but most of the time it's, it wants you to log in and uh, just be aware that you can get to it, you just have to create an account. So I have everything I'm going to talk about is here, and a bunch of links to other lists and resources as well. And I'm going to start out uh, with PowerPoint because you never can tell if you're really going to get internet when you go to these things sometimes. Yeah, I have a backup plan. So the uh, website, rmyl.wikispaces.com, uh, is where I have everything. So my first thing is to pitch you all the Young Adult Library Services Association. You make great friends. Uh, Joy Millam is the one who got me into it, and there's Noreen, you might recognize her as well. Another friend that I met through uh, YALSA. You can meet great authors. This is me with Rosemary Wells, who uh, is the author of the Max and Ruby series, which my little kids adore. And when I found out she was at this um, dinner that I went to, I'm like, okay, can I meet Rosemary Wells? Can I please, please? And they're regular people, but to us, they're like rock stars. And just to be able to like get your picture taken with them is so exciting. Uh, I got the Super Diaper Baby 2. Um, copy before it was published from Scholastic, and this is me with Dave Pilkey, and my kids think I'm a rock star because I come home with things like this for them. <laughs> really? You got Super Diaper Baby 2 before it even came out? Awesome. And the cool red cape. We all have to have red capes at this thing. Go to great places. This is me at Dallas where I got my cool cowboy boots and my belt. Um, it's a lot of interesting places. It cost me about $2,000 a year to pay to go to conferences all out of my pocket because our district has no money, but it's worth it. It's my entertainment. It's my fun. I don't let my husband go with me. I just say, I'm going to go be with my lovely friends. Uh, we're going to have drinks. We're going to talk about library stuff. And uh, we're going to have pillow fights. In the uh, this is me in Dallas, the only place where you can have a beer while you're buying your boots. Um, uh, also, I went to Washington, D.C. I got a scholarship from YALSA. They do give scholarships sometimes to first-time attendees and for various activities. I got a scholarship to um, go to uh, FXC Day, $1,000, which paid for my plane ticket out there. And um, there's a lot of really opportunities through YALSA. I had to meet with the congressman and uh, meet with our representative. And it was kind of scary, but um, they also do a lot of really good advocacy work at the national level. And I really think that advocacy work at the state and national level is the only thing that's going to keep librarians in jobs because until they legislate it and say, we need librarians to teach 21st century skills, you know, districts can cut us everywhere. So your money goes to a good cause. Uh, so I went to New Orleans, that was fun. Uh, and of course, Anaheim is coming up, so this is my pitch. Please, please, please come. It's amazing. You will not regret it. Uh, this is me on my quick picks committee uh, the first year. And this is our top ten that we have. Um, that sex book <laughs> that you have here. This is one of those things where you have to uh, be aware. My technician hates this book because she's very insulted by the graphic my English um, discusses things. But Kids want to know, and she's finding this book everywhere, like hiding, hiding, hiding. And so she finally just like put it in a drawer, and I keep pulling it out and putting it back on the counter because.
kids need to know. It's, it's uh, real facts about sex. And uh, this publisher, Zest, comes out with some really awesome good books. Um, so first thing, first list, amazing audio books is one of the lists that they put out. Um, I would recommend as a um, activity, if you have sustained silent reading periods, uh, I try to go into classrooms during sustained silent reading because the teachers a lot of times are having a lot of trouble uh, getting their kids to read. And um, if you can go in there and kind of like, make sure we're doing it, if they know you might pop in, they might actually pay attention. But um, Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book, um, there is a link to a site where he reads the whole thing, chapter by chapter, everything, the whole book. You can play it uh, to a class, you can play it in your library, and if you haven't heard Neil Gaiman, he has a fabulous English accent, and I can listen to him all day. And it's just directly from the internet, free, the whole book, which is totally amazing. And this one won the Newberry, which isn't a Yalsa, it's uh, actually the children's um, version of the ALA, but there's a lot of crossover, I think, because um, a lot of times the Newberry um, is a higher level. Yeah. Um, do you sometimes get book talks during SSR if a teacher says I'm having problems getting kids yep. to read you do that? Yeah, I do that. In fact, I had sign-ups at the beginning of the year, and I did a whole bunch of classes during SSR. I bring in my card books, um, and I um, talk about why they should read, and um, I do go to classrooms. Um, also, uh, Libba Bray, this was an amazing audiobook last year, Beauty Queens. It's read by her. It's fabulous. I want to book talk this, I say. You know, a lot of the kids have read Lord of the Flies. When boys get stranded on a deserted island, they kill each other. When girls get stranded on a desert island, they save the world. And that's what happens in Beauty Queens. Um, they're saving the world from a corporation. Basically, it's commercialism to the extreme, where the world is basically run by a corporation. And um, they happen to land on their secret island and uh, figure out what's going on and actually stop them from taking over the world. So, and she is super funny. <coughs> to hear her read it is absolutely amazing. <coughs> um, also, a lot of um, the Yalsa lists, especially quick picks, get banned. And um, <coughs> during Banned Books Week, we do a big display of paper bags. Um, right on the back of the paper bag, we write, um, why it was challenged from the, the Band Books Resource Guide. This is really awesome. They come out with a new one every two years, and the Office of Intellectual Freedom keeps track of all the challenges. A lot of the core books get challenged too, and so sometimes, um, you know, we put them up here, the core books with a little chain around it, and they're like, why did it get banned? And then they can look it up in the book. Uh, we also have an assignment that all 10th graders do um, on a challenged book where they have to uh, write a letter to the school board, you know, unofficially, uh, to explain why or why not a book should be banned or kept in the library. And uh, a lot of times the only resource they can really find the evidence is in this because a lot of times challenges are kept hush-hush. It doesn't always make it to the paper. But if you do get a challenge, make sure to report it to the Office of Intellectual Freedom in ALA and they will record it and put it in this book. So that, uh, and they can also be a good resource to help you find uh, what you need to fight those challenges. Uh, and we have a whole, I have a whole book talk which um, I stole from Joy Millam, which has um, the top 100, which is another list that ALA puts out, the top 100 banned books, and it has the picture of the cover and a quote from the book that says why they were banned or challenged. And some of them are absolutely hilarious. Um, like Chicka Chicka Boom Boom has a uh, satanic rhythm to it. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> so um, it has a lot of quotes and it's ready made. You can just steal it like I did. It's posted on the wiki and um, you can even just run it um, on one of your computers during Band Books Week. Um, another activity that I do is called Blind Date and this is where we're going to have a little bit of interaction with you guys. Um, so for a blind date, I want you to pick someone that you are sitting next to. And what you do on the blind date is you pick your most favorite book that you've read um, during the past year. And you're going to have three minutes to try to uh, convince the neighbor sitting next to you 
that that is a book they want to spend more time with. So we talk about when's a blind date. It's when you're setting up your friend with someone you think they might like. And so I do have um, some handouts for this. This handout is also on the wiki, so if I don't have enough for everybody, um, I also do a little survey. I kind of use this when I'm first going into a classroom to figure out what kind of books that they like so that I can bring those in the next time that they come. I find out what their favorite book was and um, what genres that they like. And uh, this is the form I use for that. So um, right now, I have my timer. And I'm going to set it for... Oops. How about just two minutes? Two minutes. So find a partner. You are going to decide which one's going to talk first and tell them about your favorite book. Um, yeah, I have to try to remember because I've been reading so much during remember. It has to be one book. Does that have to be YA or could it be anything? Any book. Any book. Uh, even though I read a lot of it. Is that by the John here? No, I didn't say anything. Oh. I said I, I like animals. Okay. Oh. Especially dogs. And um, I read a book called um, A Dog's Purpose. Oh, I, I have that book. I need to read it. It's so good. And it's, I basically. It's a book that is told from the point of view of a dog. And uh, basically, he's torn over and over again as a new dog. And basically, it's about you know, what, what uh, happens to him. And uh, it's really, really good. And there's another one that's also, that's also told from the point of view of a dog called The Art of Racing in the Rain. That is so good, too. You read it, and you're just like, why? That's so good. Oh, wow, that's exciting. Yeah. I'm trying to think of, um, I've read a lot of books lately, like on the Holocaust or World War II, and just, you know, just seems to attract it. And there was one that was different, it's called, and this gets mixed up with um, Fifty Shades of Grey, which is not the one, it's called Between the Shades of Grey by Rupa Septarius, I think it was. And what she was, she was a Lithuanian immigrant. I mean, or she, you know, she's second generation Lithuania. What she did, she went back to Lithuania and did research on what things were like in the um, Russian Soviet Union during World War II. And she kept coming back, her relatives were you know, transported to Siberian. And it's very different because you don't get that perspective. You only focus on Germany and things that were happening in Russia. And these people were in prison for so many years. And that was really good. Very powerful. And it's a diary about, you know, a 15 year old girl, like, kind of very Anne Frank. Different. It was just different because you don't really get that perspective. Hey, finish up your conversation. Finish up your conversation now. I'm sorry. All right, so next, I would have them switch partners and then the other person would talk. Oh. <laughs> um, with the students, I usually give them three minutes, and that seems to be enough. More than that, and they're, they run out of things to say. Um, so I'm not going to do the second half because I have lots more things to show you. But that's one of my activities. And this particular photo, um, these folks are some of the top ten quick picks uh, from this past year. The 2012 list is released in January of 2012, but has everything from the previous year, so 2011 books. And these are all 2011 quick picks. Okay, next thing is book bundles, and this is another activity that I stole from someone else. Uh, I think I read about it in Boya initially, um, and then I found they have a website as well, and it's put out at... Um, the County of Bloomfield Library. Some other state, I don't even know where it is. But um, this is something that you can do uh, to group books by genre and um, to get kids to, once they find out what they like, you know, read something or read the next one. And the idea behind this is to um, 
maybe at a time when you have a, like a break coming, to put out some of these bundles and let kids check them out over the break. Or if you are brave, and I haven't done this yet, but I know there are some librarians who have, and you want to let kids check out books over the summer and read a bundle that has to do with a particular theme, or um, read a summer series is another thing that I talk about. Uh, but uh, I call this Don't Get Dumber in the Summer. And I keep reading. And the County Bloomfield Library has the whole bunch of them that they they have by the law ready to give you some ideas. This one is missing books about kidnapping and abuse. Um, these were quick picks, all three of them. Girl Stolen was last year. Living Dead Girl, I'm not sure how long ago and what happened to Cass McBride, but they're all really intense, super good books. Uh, Living Dead Girl especially is about a girl who gets kidnapped uh, from a school field trip by a pedophile and um, he keeps her um, captive and starves her so that she stays, like, doesn't develop, stays young because he's a pedophile, and she's getting too old, and so he decides that he's going to have her pick out a replacement, and uh, it just gives me chills talking about it. I had to sit down and read it in one sitting. Uh, it's not graphic, but it's it's horrible in your mind, just fills in the blanks what this man is doing to this poor girl, and how she can't possibly let someone else go through what she's gone through. And the, you know, people say, why doesn't she just leave? Well, he, um, went, first he says, um, oh, you want to go home? I'll take you home, tell me where you live. And then he drives to the house, and when he sees where she lives, she's like, now I know where you live, and if you don't do what I say, I'm going to come and kill your parents. And so it's love of her family that keeps her. And just to prove that he will do what he does, he has like a scrapbook of like the murders that he's committed in the past, and he'll like bring home a lock of hair and say, this is from your mother, which is really, really tragic. A Girl Stolen is about a girl who's blind, and her mother um, goes into the pharmacy to get her prescription and leaves her in the car because she's feeling ill at the time. And um, it's an escalate which gets a car jacked with her in it. And when they find out that she's like the daughter of a rich person, they're going to hold her for ransom, and she has to try to escape even though she's um, no, she's blind. Um, I'm going to give away a prize right now, and so I want to ask um, who has a birthday close to today? Birthday? My birthday okay. was last Tuesday. All right, this is uh, something we got. Um, I Hunt Killers by Harry Lago. I made this into a book bundle by adding two other books that are mystery and suspense. One of them is a sampler of Solo Team, which is a new mystery series that's coming out. And I can't remember what the other one is, but isn't this cool packaging? They made it like an evidence, evidence file. So this I got on the floor in ALA, uh, in Witcher, um, which was the one just went to So that's a book bundle for you. Thank you. Um, how about anybody undergone a challenge this year? <laughs> anybody had a challenge? OK, here's a fun one for you. Rude hand gestures of the world. This one could surely get out of trouble. <laughs> and that one was not nominated, just one that got sent to me. Uh, this is a fun, Help, I'm in a Cult. This is a book bundle. All three of these books involve um, people in cult -like situations. Thaw is um, basically the government used prison inmates to um, perform like cryogenic freezing experiments on them, and the power went out, and all of them like came back to life and escaped, and one of them was a cult leader, and sucks in this girl's best friend, and she has to try to save her. Um, that one, that series, particular series, uh, the Nightfall series, is very good for middle school readers. They're really skinny, really fast, fast readings. They're super easy. It's almost like a short story. You're like, what? It's over? But some of my kids, they, they like that. They know it's going to be quick and short, and they all have um, horror themes to them. Keep Sweet is a, um, kind of came out after that um, Texas thing. Was it Texas where they had that compound with all the young girls? It's it's like that. Both of these, Chosen One and Keep Sweet, are that similar situation where they're young girls who are um, being married to 50-year-old men, and they the men, like, they have this whole pedophile thing going where they just keep brainwashing the girls as they grow up to expect it. And they, you know, kick the boys out for one reason or another so that they have their own little, you know, sex slave um, ring. And uh, 
What I love about the chosen one is uh, one of the heroes who helps her uh, is a librarian with a bookmobile. And there's a really cool bookmobile chase scene at the end that's very intense. Uh, Keep Sweet is a much more brutal um, because she actually does have to marry him and uh, he eats and you know, rapes his wives. The chosen one is more of a happy ending. I'm sorry. <coughs> Dystopia is another book one that you can do. Dystopia is really hot right now. Uh, kids who love the Hunger Games, you know, you can turn them on to Matched by Alan Condi, mm -hmm. The Maze Runner by James Dashner, or The Gardener. Uh, the Gardener's uh, a future where there's not enough food to go around, and so they're trying to um, figure out how to genetically engineer humans to uh, live off some like, like plants. Uh, the problem is, though, um, you can't go away from your like farm because then you are not um, kind of rich in one place. It's about a boy who finds a girl that's part of this experiment and tries to rescue her, but finds out she can't survive outside <coughs> the open. Uh, secret romance, this was another theme that was in um, last year, a uh, year before Quick Picks. A designated ugly fat friend. This is a girl who's a little bit overweight, and it's always her best friend who um, gets the guy. Um, and then she has a secret romance with this man, or this boy in her class who doesn't want anybody to know because she's not popular. But um, it's uh, so it's secret. The secret year is super sweet. It's a really sweet story. Uh, starts right off. The girl gets in a car accident, and she's dead. Uh, but it was like the poor guy and the rich girl, and they had a secret relationship, and he can't tell anyone because of the secret, but he's really super sad. And her brother finds her journal that chronicles their year of romance and gives it to him. And it's of him trying to get over uh, the loss of his girlfriend through reading about the relationship that they had. And it's, it's really sweet and a, a good book. And You Are You Are Not Here is a a girl whose boyfriend died and another thing where their romance was secret so nobody knows why she's all upset and she's trying to get over it and he kind of treated her like garbage and it's like her get over it already don't keep going to his grave and crying over it um, another thing I um, to uh, promote books is Book of the Moment by the circulation disc whatever book is I just finished it was really popular I really keep going in and out Right at the circulation desk, uh, maybe put a post-it on it that says why um, why you love that book. So this was when the Aragon movie came out. That's when I took that picture. But um, this is my new favorite book. I'm not giving this one away because I love it too much. But I will give away the stand and and the heart. So um, has anybody read this? Ryan Wolf? Okay, then you get the prize. Give you the heart post um, Rot and Ruin. This is a zombie apocalypse. Um, and basically, like 12 years ago, there was First Night when all the dead raised and killed everybody. And this is like, I don't know, 16 years later. Um, the teens are now living in a dystopian environment, um, all fenced in to keep away from the zombies. And um, this is about Ben and Nora, who's. Um, brother is a zombie um, hunter, and he becomes apprentice to his brother to learn how to quiet zombies. Um, but there's this whole like, ring of bad guys who are stealing teenagers and making them fight to the death in zombie land, uh, where they put teens against zombies, and they're kidnapping the teenagers, and they have to go save them, um, and it's really a good adventure. But the character development is so good. It's not just another zombie couple. It is. In fact, most of the zombie stuff happened like years ago, and it's just told about in the past tense. This is them dealing with how do you maintain a society, how do you build a society that's been totally destroyed? What kind of life do you have? So I'll pass this around. Um, this one I'm keeping because I just stole it off our book fair, and <laughs> it hasn't been processed yet. Uh, the book pass is another technique that I use. These are kids in my junior high school. I bring in a card of books. And basically, I just, um, Quick Picks has these little short synopsis um, for all their books. And so that I can expose the kids to a large quantity of books, and especially when you run out of book talks, because all your favorite book talking books are checked out. 
Uh, this is a good one to do where you can just uh, hold up the book and show it to them. I read the little synopsis that Quick Fix has and, and pass it. And with Quick Fix, it's the cover and, um, you know, those snappy little phrases that get the kids involved. And so then after, uh, when we pass the books, if they see something like, they can keep it at their desk and then just pass on the other ones. It also gives me a good indication of um, what books they're interested in because if, if the book keeps getting passed over again and again and again, I take it off my cart. I don't bring it to classrooms anymore. It's like, who's not interested? Um, also, I uh, use bulletin boards. This is uh, Simone Alcalas came to speak at our school, and this is a poster that she was handing out for perfect chemistry and rules of attraction. Um, Simone Alcalas is amazing. If you have not seen her books yet, um, these are the perfect quick pick books. In fact, the series, Perfect Chemistry series, was a quick pick top ten each year came out. So Perfect Chemistry is the first, Rules of Attraction is the second, and um, Chain Reaction is the third, and they don't have to be read sequentially here, although there is a story arc that goes through all three books. Um, it's three brothers and their romances. It's the, you know, the bad boy and the good girl and the rich girl. Um, opposites attract, and um, this is, I mean, for one series to get top ten, all three books is pretty rare, because usually with Quick Picks, you know, you can get them into book one, but uh, they're not always going to go on to the next three books, especially if they come out, you know, a year apart or whatever. Um, if you ever get a chance to get her as a speaker, she's awesome for the lecture of readers. Yeah. Is there anything um, too sexual in the one? They do have sex on the motorcycle. I don't have it in my middle school. But no, no. maybe is it descriptive? It's not graphically descriptive, but I mean, you know that they're having, but you, you know, know they're having sex. sex. But it's not like some other things were okay. Yeah, they're it's, like all it's over definitely high school. I know not many kids go to high school. So <coughs> this is another thing I do: the coffee table. This came out of Quick Fix. One of our um, Quick Fix members would do this. She puts a lot of her browsing books face up on the table, like when people walk in, and. Um, they, you know, sometimes they walk around and they're like, can we pick these up? Can we, uh, can we take these? I actually, like, set the books up to take a picture because I haven't taken a picture of it. And one of the kids is like, can, can we look at these? Can, can we pick them up? I'm like, yeah, just let me take a picture. Then you can, then you can uh, pick them up. And uh, it's a good gateway, you know, to get people that are just kind of standing around waiting for their friends or whatever to, to pick up a book. So Quick Mix does have a lot of browsing books. And this would be how you would showcase them. Just put them like on a coffee table, and they browse through them. Uh, one of my um, favorite browsing books is um, I got a couple of them. <coughs> this one's Cake Rex. Uh, sorry, I wouldn't put this in the lower grade either because they have this whole section on like the sex cakes. Um, <laughs> there's one that um, I think looks like a. It's actually like a judge's gavel, but it looks like a <laughs> big penis. Uh, but there's a lot of like ladies on a bare skin rug. And the funny thing about this is there's like a lot of grammatically one spell wrong. Best wishes, Suzanne. Underneath that, we will miss you. So it was misinterpreting the directions. Underneath that, right, we will miss you. There's a lot of really funny, um, and these are like real cakes. And this is based on a blog. A lot of times, quick picks will pick books based on blogs that are already out there. Um, like the LOL cats take over the world, and yeah. Uh, that's called Cake Rex? Cake Rex. They're all professionally done cakes. Uh, one of them that I love that's in there is a dark Vader cake holding a baby. It was for a baby shower, and it was actually kind of a double joke, because first for the wedding shower, the mother had um, ordered a wedding uh, cake um, for her shower and got a dark Vader cake by accident. So then when they had a baby shower, they purposefully said, for a joke, I want Darth Vader holding a baby. And so, yeah, yeah, so there's some really snarky, funny comments on all of them. It's kind of like, who would do that? Why would they be so stupid? There's a lot of really stupid grammatical errors. Um, you know, one of them was like a, a librarian that was retiring, and they did a, a, a cake that says a book, and then the end on it. Like, really? The end. Thanks. <laughs> retiring, so you write the end. Anybody here a zombie lover? Yeah. 
Yeah, they had it at my scholastic book fair at the middle school. They were just this is how it's at all If I check this, she hates this one. Yeah, my technician hated it too. The, the kids love it. So it's how to speak zombie. There was a fart book too. Um, you can have this one. My technician is glad to get rid of it. She hates the zombies. Um, so that's another one of my browsing books. Uh, also make displays. Um, this one shows a new very display that we have, and these are quick picks. A lot of times I just have behind the counter, like just like five or ten books that are right behind the counter, and you know, it's behind the counter. You know, oh, can I have that? Um, so if you put it in the back with a little display, all my um, Simone Huffless books are like that, on display behind the counter, um, so that kids don't have to be looking for them. It's right there. They see it. Oh, oh, I've been waiting for book number two. It's in. Can I have it? My Hunger Games are just like behind the counter like that, too. Also because they get stolen. We had to keep Twilight, we had to keep the Twilight series behind the counter for the longest time because they were being stolen. And so now they have to ask for it. Um, but it also, you know, gives it that specialness. Um, you can also be the first line of a book. This is a good thing to do if you haven't read the book and you need to do a quick book talk. Um, this one was a top ten last year, Stolen Life by JC Dubar. Heartbreaking story. Um, and if this is a graphic one, you would not want it in your middle school, although she was only 11 when she was kidnapped, so you could argue it that you want your 11-year-olds to <laughs> watch out for stuff like this. The saddest thing, she was just walking to school, and they came up with a van, tasered her, and, and took her. So it wasn't one of those, she went with a stranger thing. She was just walking to school, tasered her, dragged her to the van, and um, you know she was there for like 18 years. But it starts out with, let me get one thing straight. My name is Jason Lynn Dugard. I was kidnapped by a stranger at age 11. For 18 years, I was kept in a backyard and not allowed to say my own name. What follows will be my personal story and how one fateful day in June of 1991 changed my life forever. Uh, there's also a Diane Sawyer uh, interview. And that's another thing you can do is um, you know, click on the interview and show like the first part of it with the kids where she actually does read that line so you can have it in her own words. Uh, JC Dubar talking and um, I have three copies of this. They're always checked out. Uh, your kids who love a child called it. This is the next thing. I mean, it's, it's sad, but it's awesome that, you know, that she could get through it and, and survive.